Hello there. This here is my balancing robot, and it's a work in progress. This one is a cost down of the previous version. And today I would like to educate you on the challenges of self writing. In my opinion, the self writing is an essential feature for a balancing robot because the robot becomes a lot more autonomous. The previous version of my robot I can successfully do this, as you can see. And this feature has saved me a lot of walking. One feature that I don't like about the previous version is that it uses stepper motors. They are easy to control, but also very expensive. And also the batteries that are used in this robot are even more expensive. The new version of the robot uses very simple cheap DC motors with a gear. And the small gear is on the motor and the big gear is in the wheel itself, 3D printed, so cheap. And the motors are driven from a single lithium cell. This allows for a very big cost down. Uh, previously, the motor and the battery uh, cost about 30, 35 euros, and now it, together it's just 5 euros. So, into self riding. As you can see in this video, the robot is able to self ride. However, it's a bit too enthusiastic because it flips over and starts making fancy dance moves. This keeps on happening again and again and again. And I don't know yet why, so we'll have to dive into that. I've never gotten the robot to, to be able to self ride, and even worse, sometimes when I give a command to self ride, the robot simply powers down, as you can see now. So, we have some issues to solve. I have now placed the robot onto my test bench. I have programmed the robot such that every time that it boots, it plays a startup sound. And although you cannot hear it in this video, I hear the startup sound every time after I've done a self write. This means that the ESP32 is being reset every time that I do a self write command. So, let's investigate further. For the further investigation, I have now connected two oscilloscope probes to my robot. The first one to the battery voltage, and the second one to the 3.3 volts rail. As you can see in this frame, the battery voltage is 4.04 volts, so that's a fully charged lithium battery. But the 3.3 volt rail only reads 3.04 volts. So this means that we have a dropout of 1 volt. And just the ESP32 doesn't even get 3.3 volts. The voltage regulator on the ESP32 board that I'm using is an AMS1117. They call it a low dropout voltage regulator. However, in the datasheet, a whopping 1 volt of voltage dropout is specified. This means that when I do a self ride, uh, the battery voltage drops from 4 to roughly 3 volts. And the regulated voltage drops from 3 to 2.2 volts. So this means the ESP32 definitely will get a brownout reset. To fix the issues, I have replaced the voltage regulator with an actual low dropout voltage regulator. And now we see that with a battery voltage of 4 volts, the ESP32 voltage is 3.3 volts as desired. Now, if I do a self write command, the battery voltage is 3.08 volts, while the ESP32 voltage is 3.04 volts. So we only have a uh, dropout voltage of 0.004 volts, 40 millivolts. The ESP32 doesn't reset anymore, so hey, problem solved. Now, with the first problem solved, let's go back to the second one. Uh, we had two problems, and the second one is that the power suddenly cuts when I try to self write. For this, I go to an overview of the power scheme. My suspicion is that the fault is in the charging and battery protection circuit because the power to the whole system is being cut. So it must be early in the, in the chain, so directly after the battery. Now let's look into the schematic of the battery protection module. We see that only the W01A is able to interrupt the power that runs from the battery to the system. Looking at the IC, my suspicion is simply that the overcurrent protection is kicking in. The IC measures by means of the CS current sense input the voltage drop across the two MOSFETs. 
So I want to measure the voltage drop on the CS pin with the oscilloscope probe and then with the current probe, I measure the current that passes from the battery to the system. With this setup, I now record the waveform on the oscilloscope. And if I trigger a self ride we see that the voltage across the current sense resistor is 166 millivolts. And now if you look into the data sheet, we see that the typical threshold is 150 millivolts, so we are very close to the current th threshold, which means that sometimes it will trip and sometimes it won't. The battery protection IC doesn't offer an adjustable current trip threshold, so I have simply modified the circuit with a pull-down resistor and this reduces the apparent voltage at the current sense pin. So I repeat the same measurement, so measure the current and the voltage on the current sense pin after I self-ride. And we see that the voltage has now decreased to 90 millivolts, so well below the 150 millivolt current trip threshold. So with these modifications and fixes, the issue should have been resolved. So now let's test it. And there we go, self-riding works. It feels very satisfying after uh, quite some evenings of uh, problem solving that the self-riding actually works. And as you can see, the robot is quite dynamic and stable. And the funny thing is that this is with very minimalistic PID tuning. So oh, that's it for this video. I hope you have learned something, and if you have any suggestions or questions, let me know. Bye!